celebrate the life and legacy of Kim L. Carter. Come on, if you loved her, this woman, a woman with an affectionate smile, let's celebrate her life, her legacy, and what she left behind, because we're going to keep a smile on our face. We're going to light up the room. We're going to remember her for the great person that she is, and let's celebrate her life. Let's remember who she is. We greet you in the precious name of Jesus, who is the Christ, and, and to all of the clergy that is represented here, and to Destiny, and to all the family and friends. For the Bible lets us know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. For he's the God of all comfort, that he will comfort you during the time of need, that you may be able to comfort others. That word comfort means to strengthen, that God will give you the strength to be able to bear through the pain of losing a loved one. There's nothing other than God helping you through a time like this. Um, we've come to celebrate her life this morning. I thank God for all of those that who have made remarks this morning um, for you have spoken her eulogy. Um, for Leslie and uh, Marvin and all of those who spoke, they spoke well of her because the word eulogy means to speak well of. And they spoke well of her life, and they spoke how much she has meant to all of you through the course of the years. But also eulogy is meant for those that are left and those that remain, for they need to be comforted by God of how to survive after the loss of a loved one. And the Bible has something that to say about that, and God has something to say about that that's found in Psalms chapter 46, verse 1, and the Bible says this, God is our refuge and strength. He's a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and strength. He's a very present help in trouble. A song in the key of life. In 1976, Stevie Wonder wrote an album entitled Songs in the Key of Life. This album is considered to be one of the greatest albums of our time. It is said to be one of the greatest albums of our time is because Stevie Wonder uses many genres of music. He uses pop, he uses rhythm and blues, he uses soul music. And because he uses many genres of music, people and musicians consider this to be one of the greatest albums of our time. But not only do they think it's one of the greatest albums of our time because he uses many genres of music, but he also believed that this album is one of the greatest albums of our time because it crosses ethnical and racial lines. Whenever you go to a Stevie Wonder concert, you'll see blacks, you'll see whites, you'll see Asian, you'll see Hispanics because his music transcends across ethnic and racial lines. But not only that, but this album is considered to be the greatest album of our time because it has stood the test of time. For whenever you hear a Stevie Wonder song off of the sounds, sounds of Keys of Life, you'll hear songs like Sir Duke. You'll hear uh, Isn't She Loved You? And you'll hear those songs. And when people hear those songs, they still snap their fingers. They still clap their hands. They're able to sing to the songs or the lyrics of those songs because Stevie Wonder's songs of the key of life has stood the test of time. It's considered to be one of the greatest albums because of that. But there's another book or another album, if you would, that's considered to be one of the greatest albums of our time. It's the book of Psalms. This book also has stood the test of time. It also has crossed ethnic and racial lines. It also has been able to minister to everyone that going through something. And it's here in this 46th division of Psalms, this album right here or this song right here helps to minister to those who are going 
going through a bad times. Whenever the children of Israel will be making their way into a war, into a difficult situation, they would sing this song and it would help them be able to deal with whatever they were going through. Listen to this song and that they would sing. They would say, God is our refuge and strength. He's a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear even though the earth be removed, even though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling. Uh, he said, Selah, the word Selah there means to stop, meditate, and begin to think about what you have just sung. And the first stanza of the song, he says, meditate on this. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He says, think about that, meditate on that, because whenever you're going through a difficult situation, you got to have the right person to help you go through that difficult situation. Whenever you call, if you have a plumbing problem in your home, you call a plumber because the plumber can help deal with the plumbing problem in your home. If you have a roof leak in your home, you call the roofer because the roofer can fix the roof leak in your house. If you have pains in your body, you call the doctor because the doctor can help diagnose the pain that you have in your body. If you have electrical problems, you call an electrician because the electrician has the knowledge to fix the problem that you're having in your house with your electrician. Whatever your problem is, you got to call the right person. You don't call call an electrician when you have a plumbing problem. You don't call a mechanic when you're having a problem that with your roof. You got to call the right person to help you handle the problem that you have. Well, whenever death comes, there's only one person that I know can help you handle the death that you're going through or the problem that you're going through. And God is the one that can help you handle this problem and help soothe the problem. He says, God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. He says, first of all, you've got to recognize that God is your safe place. That word refuge means, refuge means that God is your shelter. He's the one that when trouble arises, you are running or fleeing from that trouble, but you got to run to something because many of times of us, whenever problems occur in our life and situations come, we run to other things opposed to running to God. He says you'll run to drinking, you'll run to smoking, you'll run to doing other things, but those things only lead to other problems. But he says whenever this happens, you got to run to the right person. And when you flee from the trouble, you run to God. God will be your shelter to help you get yourself together while you're going through a storm. I wonder if anybody understand this morning at this service that the God that we serve is is the one that can help you go through the problems that you're going through. He said, God is our refuge. He is your safe place. Whenever you are going through difficulties in life, you run to God. God will shelter you. He will help you get through the problem that you're going through. But then he says this, not only is God your safe place, but then he says, God also is your strength. The text says that God is your safe place. But then he says, and he's your strength. Other words, when you run to the shelter and flee from your trouble and flee from the pain of losing a loved one, you run to the shelter, but inside of the shelter, there is some strength that God will give you. While you are going through your pain and you run to God, God won't let you run out of the shelter without giving you some strength. In other words, he'll give you something so that you'll give you strength so you'll be able to bear the pain of what you just lost from the loved one least. In other words, you'll cry. In other words, you'll miss the person. But other words, when you have God with you, it won't be so hard to bear because he'll help you in the late in the midnight hour. He'll help you when you're sleeping all by yourself and your pillow is swelling with your tears. God will pick your head up and allow you to be able to deal with the pain of losing a loved one. God 
is our strength. You got to recognize who this is that's telling you that he's your strength. This Elohim, this uh, the self-existing one. This is the God that made heaven and earth. This is God that allowed the sun to go up in the daytime, the moon to go up at nighttime. This is the God that allowed the sky to be filled with clouds that look like cotton ball. This is the God that made the grass green, the, the father to be different types of color. This is God that will give you strength in the midst of your trouble. He said that God, he is your strength. He'll be able to help you bear what you're going through. I thank God that God is my strength. He said, because when you are weak, I am strong. Yeah. Other words, when you can't handle what you're going through, you don't have to handle it by yourself. You can give it to God and God will give you strength to help you bear the pain of losing a loved one. He says not only that, he says that God is our refuge. He is our safe place. God is our strength. While you're in the safe place, he'll give you strength. But then he says this, I'll help, I'll satisfy you by while you're going through this. He says that he is your safe place, your strength, but in the time of trouble, not while trouble has left. He says, while trouble is going on right now, whatever your trouble is, God says that I'll get in the trouble with you while you're going. I won't be on the outside of the trouble. I'll get in with you with the trouble is existing. I'll get inside of the trouble with you to let you know you're not by yourself. You got somebody bigger than you that created much more than you could ever do. I'll get inside of the trouble with you so you can bear the pain. Let me see if I can help you. Uh, uh, there, there, there was, uh, if you remember in biblical times, um, in the Bible, you remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You remember when they were cast into the fiery furnace. They were in the fiery furnace. You remember they had told them that, listen, uh, because you went against the God, you went against Nebuchadnezzar, you didn't bow down to Nebuchadnezzar. What we're going to do is we're going to throw you in the fiery furnace. And when they threw them in the fiery furnace, they said they turned up the heat almost seven times hotter than it normally is. And while they were inside of the fire, Nebuchadnezzar went up and looked into the fiery furnace and he said, I see three men, but I see a fourth man. And it was said, and I see the fourth man and those men that were in there, their clothes were not even burned because when they were in the fire, God got in the midst of the fire with them. Whatever it is that you're going through, no matter what your problem is, I came to tell you that Kimmy might be gone, but while Kimmy is gone, you've left with a memory of Kimmy. But if you go through the grief and the pain of losing Kimberly. Just remember that as you're going through, you're not going through by yourself. It's somebody bigger than you, somebody greater than you that will get inside of the fiery furnace with you. If anybody here want to celebrate Kimmy and celebrate God, the God that we serve will get inside of the fire with you that will help you go through the pain that you're going through. God, he is our refuge. He is our strength. He is the one that will satisfy you as you go through bearing the pain of losing a loved one. Because after this all been said and done, after we went up to the repast and we ate fried chicken, we ate macaroni and cheese, we ate some candy yams, we ate collard greens, we suffered and looked, ate a little cake and drunk some soda and some water. After all that's over, You'll go back home, you'll go back to your own local home and, and you'll go into your own home and later on in the evening, you'll be all by yourself. That's when it'll hit you. That's when you need somebody bigger than you, stronger than you to come and help you and get inside of the trouble with you. God is the only one that I know he'll get inside of the trouble with you. And when you leave and, and when you wake up the next morning that he's got inside of trouble with, you'll feel a little bit better. You'll feel a little bit lighter because that's why he says, cast all my cares upon you because he cares for you. Give it to him. He'll give you the strength to be able to bear it. With every head bowed and every eye closed. 
We thank God for being the song in the key of life. We thank for him being able to be the refuge, our safe place. He's the one that gives you strength during the time of need. But there might be someone here at this service. You don't know about the God that I'm talking about. The God that can help you bear the pain of what you're going through. I'll tell you one thing. The Bible says that the day that you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Now is the appointed time. Other words.